Okay, welcome to the Tuesday, February the 22nd, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. This is the shared screen is more for anybody who's watching this streaming over Orca Media. Um, but uh, Frank and Heather, this may help you as well, just navigating through the meeting. At least the things I'm going to say here. All right. So um, for those of you viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform. You can log in using this link. You should be able to just pay, type it into your browser, or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and this meeting ID. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me. I'm monitoring my email throughout the meeting, um, and I will do my best to help you log into the meeting. For those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. Um, please try to keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This helps reduce background noise. Um, and for the, if you're on Zoom, please try and restrict the chat function for uh, troubleshooting and logistics questions only. Anything substantive on the matters that come before the committee should really be um, presented verbally. If you do have something to say, um, you can raise your hand and then this uh, chair will call on you. Uh, right now, the only people we have remote are committee members and applicants, um, but applicants can also always feel, this, feel free to stay on and see what else is going on and what else is on the agenda. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I would find that out via my email, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain because we have listed um, the Zoom access as a way to access the meeting. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this time, do I hear a motion from a committee member for approval of the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. And I second it, this is Martha. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Martha, Liz. Um, the agenda is approved. Unless anybody else has anything to add at this point, we can go to the first applicant for 55 Berry Street. Applicant, City of Montpelier. Come up, come up and have a seat and describe your uh, application for us. Oh, I think we'll the microphone closer to you. Yes, yeah. I can. Awesome. Thank you, Hopefully this is great. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the assistant city manager, and I am uh, here about the 55 Berry Street project. So what we're looking to do is add two sets of lockers behind the rec center at 55 Berry. So it would be at the back side of the building on the right, if you're looking at the building. Um, it's The building is sort of specifically um, sort of made with a little cutout in the back. If you look at the drawings I provided, you can see we're trying to put the lockers behind the number one um, all butt out. So you can't really see that from the street, but it is easily accessible to folks who may need locker storage. Um, specifically, uh, we're looking for two uh, lockers. I included the dimensions of those. We're also planning on installing them in a way where they can't tip over. They would be safe for folks. Um, we would also not damage the brick, but uh, the uh, plan for attaching them and anchoring them to the wall would be to anchor a pressure treated two by six to the building in the mortar with anchors and then attach the lockers to the wood. I think that's a pretty, good overview of what I would like, what we'd like to do. So, okay. And if anybody needs me to share the application on the screen, just let me know. Okay. Oh. 
Cameron, what, who do you expect that will be using these lockers? Um, this request has been uh, sort of championed by our homelessness task force here, and we anticipate folks who do not have a, uh, a regular place to store items such as sleeping bags, et cetera, will use these. They have key locks or combination locks? Um, these ones can be made with both. We would anticipate, well, we haven't quite figured out the implementation of this yet, but we okay. anticipate them being uh, I, I, combination locks. Okay. Do you imagine putting them on a concrete pad as well? Or are you just gonna put them on? The they dirt? come with um, feet. So I didn't. we didn't think that was necessary. Okay. It may be worthwhile putting some, at least initially putting some pressure treated blocks of some kind under the legs, only because if, depending on when they're installed, if the ground is wet, they're going to sag mm. unless they're really anchored to the uh, to the to the wood framing against the brick wall. Thank you. That's a good consideration. It may even be nicer to run two two buys and not touch the ground at all so that you're not relying on the ground to support them because I feel like that ground's going to come up and down and the good. lockers are going to sink into them and it's just good idea then they're not subject to any frost heaves <laughs> yeah just fully support them off the wall oh don't have them on the ground at all just hang it basically on just the building leave them up in the air and anchor yeah. it to the building yeah and then that way it doesn't matter what's on the ground or if it freezes or thaws or whatever it's not affecting it at all yeah i feel like i don't have the technical expertise to agree or not with that just because i don't know how it's, these ones were designed it's Let an me. it's an option we'll leave it as an option okay but it's recommended just for stability of the lockers that makes sense so just so I'm going to share my screen on this for just a minute. Um, just because I don't know if make sure everybody noticed that that wall there is not flat. There's a yep. bump out to it. Right. So they is... would need to probably put more wood higher to be able to do that. Right. If the lockers are this high, there would need to be more if you're I don't know if you're talking about anchoring it. Well, I am. Two I mean, down here. Whoever wrote the description about how they were yep. going to anchor it seems to have some fairly reasonable knowledge about how to do it. And I would imagine that they were going to do it at the top and not at the bottom anyhow, which mm -hmm. is to say that no matter what, they were going to have to pad out at the top to, mm -hmm. to deal with however out of plumb that wall is. Mm -hmm. And what I'm, or not out of plumb, but stepped back. Okay. And all I'm suggesting is adding a second one lower down. Got it which wouldn't uh i guess would possibly increase that uh how much it's padded off at the top by an inch and a half which would be the thickness of the one on the bottom uh but i think that it would make for a more stable and more secure and over the long term a more reasonable installation of those things than having them sit on the ground and then get oh. pushed around by the ground thank you ben and again, the, the framing on the wall could be either placed horizontally or vertically. Mm -hmm. uh, if if yep. you've got a, it's like the concrete base is stepped out. So if you mounted something on top of that and then anchored it in the mortar joints, which are vertically aligned, mm -hmm. uh, then you could attach the lockers to, to that as well. And again, that's, that's up to whoever is doing the installation. I mean, I wonder if, you know, they could consider a concrete pad there, too, instead, or in addition. It's just going to get muddy, I think, with people coming and going, and and uh, unless there's gravel, maybe, you know, <laughs> sufficient amount of gravel there. I wouldn't answer if it's sufficient, but I do know that that is gravel back there. Oh, okay. I see. 
And again, that's more for convenience and cleanliness of the area if it's not a mud hole when they're trying to go back there in April. <laughs> that makes sense. I will say, I think it's, I hadn't seen that before and it does seem like a nice effort towards doing something that's helpful and useful. And it seems like a nice area to do that in for like central location and all that. So any other ideas that might be supportive in that general direction, I think is great. Thank you. Does anyone else on the committee have anything to add? Any comments, questions, suggestions of any kind? If not, just, I, I, mean, I just have one more comment um, about the security of the site. I mean, I guess the, the lockers must be pretty durable and, and heavy duty, but um, it looks a little kind of out of the way to me as though um, it might not be the safest place to put them as far as vandalism goes, but maybe I'm wrong. I think that is a fair um, question and a fair comment. We have been working as a leadership team to come up with this plan. So our police chief has had a chance to look at this plan and we are still working out the implementation, but you know, there has been time for the police department to weigh in and that isn't a concern enough to prevent us from doing this or wanting to do this. Um, you know, this is a huge need that's been identified uh, by the community that it would serve and um you know hoping to just add a little dignity to that to that space so um i think it's a fair question i i know these lockers are for elementary schools and middle schools uh was where we're getting them from is a school supply so they're definitely hardy um uh, uh you know i i think it's one of those we'll we'll try it and see honestly thank you if this is and this is something that um placement of these lockers has been brought up several several times with the, the planning department mm -hmm. as to trying to find a location um, and a lot of the locations that different members of the community would prefer don't work because they're in the floodplain um, right. so we've had to nix a lot of them because of that concern that's not an issue here um, and we also in our review we also think about you know visibility the nice thing about this is it is I'm trying to remember if that side specifically but i think you can see it from um stone cutters way you can um and because that's right where that the path connects through so even though it's behind the building you can actually see it from a street if the police actually needed to try and 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 check on that space on a regular basis or anybody else so one other question is there any lighting for after dark which happens pretty early in the end of December. <laughs> that is a good question. I, that is a, a issue that plagues this whole city. Um, I know that there is lighting on Stonecutter's Way, but beyond that, yeah. I don't think so. I I'd have to remember. check the back of the rec center. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if there is, it might be on the other side where the <laughs> connector dog. for the bike path goes through. Mm -hmm. um, An inexpensive option might be some solar power motion detector lights. Mm -hmm. They work really well, they're very inexpensive. And again, they could be mounted with one screw and a mortar joint, depending on the, the light. That's in a location that gets a lot of sunlight during the day, so they would recharge, and then they would come on when they detected any motion. So several of those placed on the side and around that corner Yes, thank you. It would you. be fine. They're, they're fairly small. They're about this size. And they're black. I knocked the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you do opt to do lights, you'll just need to check in with Audra or myself um, because there's lumen limits. Okay. And they need to probably be downcast because it is pretty close to um, a yeah, residential there's a neighbor. development. Mm -hmm. So we need to work out the details on that. But if if the design review committee gives you preliminary approval for a option then it wouldn't have to come back here great thank you mm -hmm. they're usually fairly low profile mm -hmm. and they come in black so they would just disappear uh, pretty much okay and again they only light up when they detect motion after dark 
I would be in support of that. It feels like a nice thing to have. I would too. This is Martha. Yeah, I agree. Liz. Great, thank you. I welcome that as an option. By the way, it's so inexpensive. I installed a number of them on a garage. Oh, the solar lights? The solar detected motion lights. I put five of them on and it cost me barely over $100. Okay. You can get them with a variety of, of lumen options. Um, we've been yes. We've been looking at those frequently over the last year as people have come through with. And they the can process. either shine in one area or they can spread out to about 180 degrees. And again, they're they're not that bright, and they only come on when there's motion. And five minutes after there's no more motion, they go out anyway. Any other questions, comments? We can run through the criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings. For historic structures, the removal of historic, of historic materials uh, or alteration of features and spaces that characterize the historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that will characterize an historic building shall be preserved. There's no deterioration features here. Uh, any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. This application is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. And I believe that there's one. Yeah, this one's a little funky. Yeah. Anyway, landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall be considered the following site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Uh, and again, that's acceptable in this location. And that's all the criteria. All in favor of the application, uh, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Liz. And Steve. So it is approved for two zero. So since you're here, we'll have you sign this. Awesome tonight so that we can hopefully um, get moving on the administrative site plan tomorrow. I'll just need to know what you pick out for lights before I can issue the permit. Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you very much for coming to the meeting. And good luck with your project. You have to take our own technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to come in tomorrow and like tape it down or something. Yeah. I thought it used to be taped down. It did. Okay. <laughs> no, I that we we don't have any public public in here, just applicants, so we shouldn't need it. <laughs> just us, just us. Just us. <laughs> Thank you. The next application is for 132 Main Street, Vermont Program for Quality and Health Care. Replacement of 14 first floor windows. I have brought in some extra additional photos, which I took just tonight of the interior reference, but what they show is like the broken ropes. Okay. These, yep. these windows are old pulley ropes. And um, so that's just some extra packets of pictures, and I can certainly um, email those so they can be shared for with those of you folks. Liz and Martha, could you hear that at all? Part of it. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. Yep. sorry. No, oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. There's this, um, Bonnie has provided additional other reference photos showing the interior of the windows as they showing the deterioration. Mm -hmm. um, but we just have the paper copies tonight. So um, I can maybe hold them up to the, the camera if you need them, but I don't know if you're going to need them or not. I am. Yeah. My apologies. I thought about taking the in this inside photos just to show some of the broken ropes. So the windows are the old pulley and rope style. And um, out of the 14 windows, six of the 14 have broken pulley ropes. So I just wanted to bring in just a couple extra reference photos. But uh, so thank you for um, having me this evening. Um, our permit is um, to remove 14 original windows and replace them with custom made Marvin vinyl clad windows there's windows, the sash, the sill, the trim is all to replicate the historical originals. One window has already previously been done in 2016. So these windows that we did in 2016 will be the same exact window procedure that was done at that time. So they will look exactly like that window referenced in the photos as being the 2016 window. Um, when we started this project, I called the Vermont Historic Preservation Officer, uh, Laura Treishman, and conferred with her about who to find as a contractor, because we know that our windows are historical. Mm -hmm. She referred us to Mark Brownell of uh, Marvin Designs, excuse me, Mark of um, Marvin Designs, and that is who we got the other window from in 2016. So he is actually the contractor who will be doing the work, and he is the contractor who does all of the state historical preservation work. Um, so they basically have approved, um, our pro project has been approved by the historic preservation officer, and she's approved our contractor. Um, so um, I've just provided some photos. Um, if I'll get to them, I can just sort of. I can show them up on the screen if you tell me which ones. OK. Um, so, uh, so sorry. sorry. It's OK. Uh, if you look on your on the laptop there, you should be able to see what I'm showing. OK, so right Hold there, on, let me... I wanted to stop sort of there. OK, these are the two um so the window that you see on the right is the 2016 marvin window that is trim custom made custom stained to match that existing original that number one next to it but you can see from in the building the new window unless you stand right up to it interior the only difference you see is the absence of the ropes. So that's what those photos there were showing. It, On, it may just be the photo, but it, and it, this is out of our purview, but the trim on the interior seems to be different to me. It doesn't have that kind of like there should the be edge a profiles. There should be a better close up of that trim. Yeah. Yep. So the profile there. And, and you're right, the angle is a little funky, it, yeah, and maybe the strings, the... the strings on that net, this photo here yeah. are kind of hiding that the profile is basically the same. I think it's missing one edge. You see those little edges? But it has a more sort of like tapered in versus a very square yes. corner. Yes, yes. And yeah. that's kind of my bad photo taking. Sure. I was trying to get as much of the detail as I could showing the strings. I appreciate having them back to back. So it's a, um, it's a hard photograph to take, but is. I'm thankful for it. <laughs> it is. And I was doing that with a cell phone, so. Um, Usually when they. You can see the differences, like the existing has the screws where you access the road panels. Yeah. The new one doesn't. There's that missing bead. There's one bead um, in that trim there. Yep, that's yep. missing. Right. Right. All that if you would if you're going to be filling the cavity 
yeah. the weights are in to be so, able to insulate. Exactly. So what they're going to do, the plan is to remove the trim, the existing trim, and save it if we can. Some of it's going to be brittle, some of it's going to break, but he's hoping that most of it can just be saved. So all of that outside face trim can yep. be reused. The interior sash and sill will be replaced because the window the will be a one unit instead of what's now a unit. And then there's this added aluminum storm on the outside that we won't have going forward. Um, so that's the difference in the width there, but it, it's still the same size. The hole isn't changing. It's the exact same hole. Everything is the exact same fit. Um, the paints, the stains are the exact same paints and stains that were used in the 2016 project. They're all still available. Um, and those are historically, you know, correct as far as exterior and interior. Um, the plans, uh, you know, we did include the plan with all the steps of the window itself. Um, and then there is also an example of the colors. For reference, I included the original 2016 permit, which actually shows a historical 1902 photo. I just thought for historical reference, it showed where that window had originally been boarded up. Yep, there yep. it is. And so now that is the, the new 2016 window. Um, the plan uh, by Marvin is to come in and tent and replace each window individually. It will be tented on the outside, tented on the inside for dust and insulation abatement. And they will remove and replace the window in completion in one day then clean up and move to the next window. That way we can also work in the office. So we'll, they'll go room by room and we'll be kicking people out as appropriate. But it also keeps the disruption in the parking lot and everything else down to a bare minimum because it's a two man job. One man on the inside, one man on the outside. And they can just complete a package, move on to the next day. Um, and they would, you know, of course, starting when the weather is warmer. <laughs> so maybe in the next few weeks, um, you know, when it's uh, weather permitting and warm. Quick question, the Marvin uh, clad ultimate double hungs are usually metal clad on the outside. The integrity line is the fiberglass cladding. I'm assuming this is the, unless they changed it, I'm assuming it's clad with metal on the outside, which makes no difference. I think these are actually a vinyl. Um, I don't think these are metal. Uh, the specs do say vinyl. <clears throat> vinyl clad. And they're custom painted and or stained in the factory. So they have all the colors. So all, when they're, they're the trim, they're actually stained uh, in the factory. Oop. Huh. Well, that's weird. Oh. It's interesting because it says on line item quotes line number one quantity one uh this is for one window it says top sash primed pine sash exterior primed pine sash interior so i'm not sure it really makes no difference the clad ultimate double hung is a is a good product i've just never seen the vinyl clad this line yeah this is the top line window and yeah, these are, they are, well, as you see, I mean, they're 14, 15, almost $2,000 a piece. I mean, the prices range because each one is individually measured yes. because some of the windows are even out of by a quarter inch from top to bottom. <coughs> so each window had to be measured so that it's custom for each window opening. That way the opening does not have to be, you know, modified in any way. It is just removing that old one and popping in that new one. 
Um, when I was looking at the um, specs for two, uh, 2016, I think, are those solid wood windows? They aren't clad? Just curious. It's what it seemed like when I read them. They're a vinyl. They are vinyl, the ones that were put in in 16? Yep. That's a vinyl as well. And it's been factory painted or colored, so it's the same brown, the interior. Um, as well. <laughs> and then they're pre-painting some of the outside exterior pieces and interior pieces in order to save labor. And because of the weather, they're going to do a lot of that stuff in-house and pre-paint and pre-stain a lot of the boards that they have to. So it's a much faster assembly. Yeah. Yeah, for easy, much, you know, be much easier to put in one window in a day. Pieces. I would double check for them only because the description of the wood wood ultimate insert double hung. Here they describe it. Uh, it says factory applied enamel primer, treated bare wood. But again, now is that is that I, just the trim pieces? This is the I don't the know. Sash. That's the sash. Yeah, but this anyway, is for the I mean, 2016 either, job. Either one is fine, but the clad is a it's a, a much lower maintenance. Again, whether it's the exterior. I think right now we're looking at the stuff from the 2016. Oh, okay. um, so that the the specs on the window does seem to say wood ultimate insert double hung. Um, I didn't see where you okay. saw the bare wood, but anyway, just yeah. As, as so let me just look. Steve was saying, just speaking, check with window to window. They were supposed to basically be the same window. Now, whether they changed how they primed pine exterior, and so the new one will be evergreen clad exterior primed pine interior. That's the difference between the 2016 window and the window that they're proposing now, Mark. That's okay. They have the same profiles. Yeah. The, the cladding is just wrapped around the, the wood anyway. Um, but the, as far as like what it will change for visual on the exterior, the side by side. You know, photo that shows side by side the 2016 and the existing. Uh -huh. um, the only thing that's different is the it won't have that aluminum storm. Yeah. Right. That's the only difference that is noticeable or what would be noticeable would be a will they will not have that that hot aluminum um, storm. If the windows will no longer need them, you know, they're 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 better windows. Right now we have custom inserts for storms on the interior um, to help with the drafts yes. and um, the heat loss. And I have to put up boards on my two windows in front of my space because when the wind blows, it actually blows those plastic inserts out. <laughs> so much wind gap there. Well, one of the things you'll find out is the hollow space that holds the window weights. Once they empty those out, they can fill that with insulation and then your drapes will no longer blow around. Blow in, in the breeze. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be, we've had um, like things blow out at us like like dead bugs and things in a meeting. <laughs> Our executive director was just sitting at her desk. The wind was blowing that day and you could hear so the, some of the panes are actually out of their frames. Mm -hmm. in, of the storm so you can hear it rattling and she's having her meeting and going along and all of a sudden this gust of wind comes and this giant dead bug flies out and lands right on her laptop and she screams and it flew out of the window somehow <laughs> yeah so it was time to do something about these windows <laughs> 
Um, you know, we're burning up a lot of fuel. We have high fuel costs. Yes. Um, and any committee members have any additional comments, questions, or suggestions? Not from me. Then I can go down through the criteria for the project. All projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated features shall be repaired rather than replaced when possible. Where the severity of deterioration requires a replacement of a character defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, shall not be approved. This replacement of the windows is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height or facades, as well as the relationship of width and height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, the visual pattern established by the alterations of solid walls and openings in the facade of buildings shall create a rhythm. Here we have an existing rhythm of windows that will be preserved. And again, patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but shall respect the original. That's not applicable here, but the features is acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures. Character defining window and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features should, such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. That's acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Steve. Liz. So it's approved four to nothing. Thank you very much. So we're just going to get your signature on this tonight. Or if this is just Windows, we should be able to get that permit out tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you very I much. I appreciate it. I mean, good luck. Is there still a pen up there? There is. Okay, awesome. Again, good luck with your project. Yeah. It'll be yeah. nice to be warm again. Oh, I'm so super excited. <laughs> or cool in the summer. Or cool, cool in the summer as well. <laughs> it's a real energy saving plus. It's going to be the first thing I'm going to do is detract the fuel. Mm, good thing I do is set up my so spreadsheet. Those are extras. Okay. We don't need those. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks again. So the next application is for 203 Barry Street. On our applicant, Frank Celiani. We have them on Zoom. Okay. Frank and then uh, his wife Heather Southwell. Did we did I pronounce your name correctly? You did. Yes. Good job. But I'm glad I get close. Des <laughs> Describe your application for us. Uh, well, we um, are faced with a rear porch on the back of the house that has uh, rotted away, and it is sitting on a small shed structure below it. Um, 
and it is all not structurally sound. So in order to replace the porch, we have to re remove that shed structure. And part of that will require removing the stairs that are attached to the shed structure. So we are going to replace the stairs and the back porch. <clears throat> and I can share any part of the application that people need me to. Now, Frank, I understand that there is an apartment over the, what needs to be yes. the store. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And right now the stairs, um, the rise over run is not to code. So that's the other reason why we want to replace the stairs so that the rise and the run is um, safer because now they're very steep and there's a roof over the stairs and um, it is not hung high enough. So there's not adequate head clearance at the top of the stairs either. It, so is that all of this work we're doing is really to make everything safer because right now it is not. Is that apartment, um, is there someone living there now? <laughs> there is not, the previous owner was living there. Okay. Could we see a picture of that? I, I did look at the application online, but I just wanted to refresh my memory. Yep. So this is from the back. Uh, and here, uh, the shed part that's going to get removed. There's an old porch, or current porch. Um, and so here's the current stairwell, right, with the roof over it. Um, and then I'm gonna scroll down. So here's where those stairs are supported by that shed in a way that's really not working. Mm -hmm. um, so there's what it's gonna look like replaced with the longer mm -hmm. open stairs. And I think Frank, you said that the, the treads are gonna be so the tread's going to be metal open? Yeah, the yep. treads will be open metal gray. Yeah, so the snow and stuff will be able to fall through, and that shed is completely gone here, and instead there's supports that go all the way down to the ground for the porch and the top of the stairs. Correct. Um, and then there's, this is a little bit different, but this is going to be the new porch area with the roof. Is the roof just going to go partway? Yeah, the roof will stop at the end of the building. Yep, um, and that's what the stairs are going to look like coming down. So it will also the stairs will also go down and stop versus right. going down and then turning the corner at the bottom. Correct. And the landing at the top of the stairs will also be a metal grate. Right. Yeah. Thank you. And I saw that there was some question about where the property line is. Um, are, are these new stairs, the proposed stairs, going to be in exactly the same spot? They will, they will occupy the same footprint, yes. Okay. They yep. will not extend as far into the alley because they won't be making a turn. Okay. This will be gone. That's right. So it'll actually end up being further away from the property line than it is now. Correct. And that red line is approximately where we understand the property line to be. Yeah, so the new stair, I mean, the railing and so on will be like pressure treated lumber. It will be, and mm -hmm. um, it will be painted. Mm -hmm. But it'll get a year of uh, weathering before it's painted so that the paint um, adheres to the material better. Yeah. Okay. I realize that these drawings are um, just to, especially regarding the treads, are just for illustrative purposes. Um, so it may not actually. It may actually have this when you purchase thread from McNichols on the back side of the tread, you can get a pin that then 
reduces the opening between the bottom, between the top of one tread and the bottom of the other to make it a code compliant uh, stair. Oh, okay. Can't have a space any bigger than four inches between your treads. And often when you buy those metal treads, they have a, they don't all do, but some do have a metal plate on the back side that is a riser on the back of the tread that then makes uh, makes those code compliant. I would just check with uh, that that's what you're getting. It seemed as though you've hired Dan Clare, who does a very nice job. So I'm certain that yeah. he will will do the job. But. That and this will need a building permit. So yeah. we're going through this. The project, the larger project, has to go to the development review board yep. um, in two weeks. Yep. So we've been waiting on having having the building permit process get moving until we finish up the rest of it. And, um, but Chris is in on the project. And just if that issue comes up, you can get those treads with an integrated back. Yeah, I like that. So that it's you don't have to like come up with some other weird special move. Sure. Thank you. I'll talk to Dan about that because that's okay. his wheelhouse. Yep. For you. <laughs> yep. He'll do a nice job. Oh, his work is pretty thorough and he's very conscious of building codes. Yes. Any committee members have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Mm -hmm. Then again, I'll go through the criteria sheet. For all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non historic and non contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non historic and non contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. The replacement of the stairs and the upper portion of the deck are acceptable. Existing buildings should be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building, acceptable. And I believe that's all. All in favor of the project as presented, your names. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. Yes, yes. So four to nothing in favor. And you want to mention about getting this signed by him? Yeah, uh, well, it's not quite as important because it has to go to the development review board. Okay. Uh, so Frank, I'll send you a copy, a scanned copy of this recommendation form so you have it for your records. It's also going to go in the perm, the per application file that goes to the development review board. Um, because they didn't um, include any recommendations or changes or anything, we're, we're not going to have you sign it. it because it's not you don't really need that to get the final say so um but uh we'll see you i will see you at the development review board hearing in a couple of weeks just like you did for tonight you'll get an email with that agenda link um and you'll also get um in that agenda link there'll be a staff report that's my summary of the whole project under all the applicable zoning regulations i'm working on that already and just as a little FYI, um, I haven't got any concerns from the Department of Public, which is the main department that would be looking at the use change. So, um, but you'll you'll hear more from me on this in the next week, week and a half. Great, thank you. Thank you all so much. We really yes, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck with your project. Thank you. So thank much. you. Have a nice night. Bye. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is for 90 Berry Street, an informal review of a proposed porch renovation. Is someone there? And what's your name? Michael Curtis. I work for Washington County Mental Health. Okay. The owner of the building. 
Michael, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. Could you pull up to the microphone a little more? How's that? That's much better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I apologize in advance if I spit, but through the mask, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I find that sometimes the microphones actually have a harder time with the deeper voices. Oh, okay. I think it just doesn't doesn't okay. hit as pick it up quite as well. Okay. So you guys got the drawings from uh, Joel, the architect. So just a little history on ninety. We've been here before because ninety had uh, ninety got CDBG money through the city. So we worked with Kevin and on that. Uh, we were here on railing for the accessible ramp on the new apartment that we, well, the new apartment that we renovated to ADA standards. We have uh, put just about, just around $200,000 to do accessibility, electrical upgrade, weatherization, new heating, Roof, driveway, new water line from the uh, city line. And uh, we, when we got the CDBG, we, were, we asked for the porch, but we didn't get enough money to the porch and all the other stuff. And we had to go back to the well because the roof failed. And so, pre pandemic, we thought our, we got an initial guesstimate, and it was a wild guess that it would cost forty grand to fix the porch. Uh, and we figured, okay, we can bite the bullet for that, given all the other money that's going into it. Well, as the construction team was there, the carpenter started looking at the porch and watching it separate from the uh, side of the house. And uh, he said, um, well, I'm hoping I'm not to do there. I said, I, I am too. Father gave us an estimate, a much more thorough estimate. They went through it line by line. We got the, the drawings that you see from Joel. And the estimate before we pay for engineering and structural engineering and all that other stuff that I've learned we now have to do, is a minimum of 160,000 <laughs> bucks. Ouch. The assessed value on the house is about 200,000 bucks. We've just put over 200 in it. We've got another five or 10 to put in it on fixing the apartment where the meth dealers were cooking and then fix the apartment oh. ceiling where we had to go through the ceiling to do the weatherization because there wasn't enough eaves and if we went in under the eaves we would have to change the uh what is that old knob and tube insulation which would have been changing that would have cost us another forty thousand so this is a hole in the ground that there has been a lot of money poured in. so i'm here to ask if folks on this committee have any ideas how we can get a porch that fix fit standards and not have to lay out 160,000 bucks. We just got an award from the Department of Mental Health uh, of $400,000 for our buildings. I'm putting more than a third of it towards one porch. We've, I mean, we have $100,000 of work alone that we need to <laughs> point the, all the bricks. It's a fascia, we have to put in a new lift. And one hundred and sixty thousand dollars is a huge fight. So I'm um, kind of at a place where we're looking for help, ideas. Uh, I'm sure that one suggestion will be to look for more money. And I've been looking, and there might be a pot of money at Down Street that we could get forty. And oh no, I'm sorry, thirty. And with our 40, that brings it up to 70, and we still don't need to have half of what we need. Michael, is the existing porch dangerous? Um, well, we've got to prop it up somehow. Okay. Uh, it's 
the sole purpose, I mean, his primary purpose is access to one second floor apartment. But it was built in the day when that was a single family home and it was very elegant home. It's a two story wraparound. It's a beautiful, beautiful porch. Um, it is, the pictures are gorgeous. What is, what is the flooring in the porch? Is that Sounds like real general? expensive? The fur floor, or is it's, it? It's like it looks like beadboard. Yeah, tongue yes. roof. Yeah. Yep. Where is it failing? Uh, it's coming off. Um, if you look at, if you go up where the roof is, it's starting to come. Uh, the, the roof is starting to come away. Yeah. Probably because if you go down the column and get to the bottom of the column. Uh, that's been MacGyvered right. eight or ten times, probably. How it's attached to the ground has been MacGyvered. Yeah. Have you looked at Techno Metal Post? Uh, we haven't had it. I don't know what it, what that is, but if uh, you know Steve and and Jason and Connor um, aren't going to make that call, they're going to call in DeWolf to say do whatever. It's in in that that alone. I mean. Right. The when we is... when we got the four hundred forty thousand dollar guess, that was pre pandemic when a deck board you could buy for sure. four bucks, and now they're twelve. Sure. It's, and so it's, all this... the, the projects are killing them. Yeah. So I have a question: Is this building then in commercial use, or it is four apartments? Uh huh. Uh, we last. Winter, um, we took people from Good Sam as a transition in three of the apartments, and we had um, another set of folks who we work with in the fourth. We currently have three of the apartments are folks who we work with, and the fourth one still has somebody from Good Sam who's waiting and has been waiting for five months now to get into one of the uh, Berry Housing Authority apartments. Um. So have, are you using the historic preservation tax credit at all? Let's talk to Caitlin about that. Oh, um, you have. And okay. apply in June or July. Uh, it's one of those don't hold your breath on this one. If there's not, there's not much there there. I mean, we have no equity whatsoever. Okay, whatever equity is in the building, VHCB owns. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, refinancing a $160,000 porch on a $200,000 house. Right. Okay, well, I'm sure Caitlin will do the best she can. I just was curious. Okay. Yeah. Great on a lot of things. Pardon but, me? She's been great with yeah. a lot. Of Good. Thank you. With both the ground floor and the second floor systems or systems attached securely to the house i i couldn't say for positive i don't know there well, the second second floor you should be able to look up underneath and see right, the joist yeah. going across and you and should band but, across the house but there's some very expensive ceiling stuff on it yep so you can't see underneath what we can see where that expensive ceiling stuff fell out yep. is some old um, rough cut that's uh, correctly for today's cut. And it's not, what you can see doesn't look great. It's, goes, it's probably the 18, I think that one's 1898. Yeah. Move that ceiling piece by piece gently and salvage as much as, as much as possible to give you an idea of how you could stabilize both both the upper and lower and then you can I mean it, basically it's a two by eight or depending on the width it's a two by eight or a two by eight, ten frame system just like you would frame the floor of a house yep. properly well today you'd use pressure treated material but you can either replace pieces sister on pieces add pieces to bring it up to to save much of the material that's good 
and bring it up to code by adding a structural components. Yep. So yes, you can you can do that without having to tear the whole thing down and start over. But it's pretty soft when you walk on it. So I guess that's part of the reason why Jason O'Connor didn't have a lot of faith mm -hmm. that we were going to get. What were those things that you? That seemed to me that where a lot of this failure is coming from is how it's attaching to the ground because it's moving, and what's there's a thing called a techno metal post, which is basically a big screw. Uh -huh. that yeah, you okay. can drive into the ground and get down below frost and you can do that uh it's actually very minimally invasive and pretty easy to like get into those things and then you can kind of support the post off of that and then you're not you're down below frost and it's a well-supported thing so it's not now so moving. it's not moving that way right that's not going to help you with your floor joist spacing no. or whether that's spongy or that's not a thing but my suspicion is your main problems are coming from it not being having a good foundation and that's a relatively inexpensive way to get um and is yeah much way way to go a lot easier yeah that would be less expensive yeah having not seen the problem i don't you know i can't speak to that but it is a it is a, a solution that um i've used in the past and i think is remarkable piece okay. of modern engineering as okay. far as how to get foundations especially for things like this ben just for clarity is it a subtype of a helical pile or it's the like same a helical pile Te techno metal post is a branch of a helical pile that's okay. local there's a, a distributor here in my okay. that does that so okay. there's a whole bunch of different people so it's, it's, a, it's a brand of helical, helical pile anchors. okay wait, no. wait. Yep. helical Helical pile. anchor. Yep. He, yeah. H e l i c a l. And the techno metal post is three words. Okay. And there's a, a, a Zach Laporte lives here in town, and that's his business. Yeah, I was just looking it up. <laughs> yeah. He lives up on the Hackamore because you can see the massive pile of techno equipment metal that he has in, okay. stuck in yeah. the woods there. So that's somebody Connors are going to know. Connors may know him, yeah. yeah okay. Yep. Yeah. But it, I bring it up because it's local, because yeah, yeah. it's a good solution to this problem yeah. that I assume is where a lot of this is coming from. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you said you're working with DeWolf engineers? Not DeWolf. yet. I, I don't okay. want to take on that talk. No, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Because they, they would have some good ideas too. But yeah, maybe that's down the road. But it is something that Chris would know about, and it's something that is uh measurable so okay it's not just like a fly by seat of your pants kind of thing so not like this you put your four by four in okay no okay. yeah so just for the um design review committee's uh understanding too um because the building is listed on the national register if for some reason they get to the point where they need to try and demolish the porches they're going to have to go to the development review board for approval um and so yeah it'd be and and the porches are described within the national registry so any any thoughts you have on getting and, and how they might be able to be saved are really appreciated so thank you for looking through this the first Part is to have somebody just explore what what the issues are, which means somebody may have to crawl around underneath that ground level porch, remove some of the lattice and or the covering that goes down to the ground and crawl around underneath to examine what's there and how what kind of shape it's in. If there are any deficiencies, if anything's separating, or if it's, I mean, that'll tell you what what you need to do as, as or what your options are as far as repairing or replacing components. Give me one second. We just had a late sign in. Um, I have a G Kerrigan. Could you unmute and let me know who you are and what you were signing on to Montpelier's Design Review Committee meeting for? Yeah, I am a resident of Montpelier. I live on Sabin Street. 
and I was just listening in. Um, Frank Saliani is a neighbor of mine, and oh. I don't know if that issue has already come and gone, but I thought I'd tune in. Uh, it, it has. Okay. Uh, so the design review of that has already happened about the, the stairs and the porch. Okay. The application will be on the development review board meeting uh, in about two weeks. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Ben, do you know of any other cool stuff? One of the, one of the costs on Joel's uh, design, uh, design is the tip wall on the porch is too low. And so he's got these steel railings. Steel railings, which are pretty pricey. Yep. You know of any, you know, steel railings are us things? <laughs> Uh, I happen to build lots of these things. Um, so, I mean, I have no idea what you price you got for that. Um, that is something I do, but it's, um, there's not like an off the shelf thing. No, or is it, or is, I guess the other way to ask the question, is there another way to deal with, um, raising that up so that's it's less costly yeah i think there is okay. i mean i would need to think about it i mean I, I mean looking at the materials of what you know what i know goes into creating a steel rail and then painting it and you know making sure that it's yeah what, what's often oh excuse me go ahead getting it to fit these spaces and sort of doing all the sort of shop drawings there's probably uh i'm quite certain some other wooden alternatives with maybe some okay sort of uh um four by four metal goat screen that would go in there whether that meets historical that's a whole nother another question but um Okay. I do believe that there are more economical ways to do it. Yeah. Often, yeah, in those historic railings that are too short, we just put a very simple, you know, like a pipe railing. Um, oh, yeah, we've got some of those. And then just paint them black and they kind of disappear. You know, they're not that visible. So that's one option that's um, pretty simple and doesn't really detract from the historic railing. Okay. Have you talked to Chris Lumbra about that one? About yeah, I, I, I don't know if Jason did or not. Yeah, I have no idea. Okay. Um, but that's always in case he didn't. Um, you know, yes, this would need to to you know get some other input. But they he he might have some other ideas as to what meets code, and then mm -hmm. it's tweaking it a little bit to make sure that it it blends in. No. What about do we have to do we have to cover the underneath of the, the porch like it is now? Right now, there is a, a ceiling on the lower porch, so it's almost like it's kind of like a tongue and groove or a beadboard or something. Yes, I don't know what it is, but the, I don't. You can't really see it from the street. Is that something you, we can trim back on? We just have like a regular deck. Exposed joists, you're saying? That, having yeah. that might that might be okay. I think. Yep. Yeah, okay. I just I, I just before I go back to the you know, have some I ask them to spend more money. Yes. Um, But it sounds like you need to remove portions of it in any way to examine what the yeah. what the structural yeah. issues might yeah. be, yeah. and then and and again, the, what's there is a, a beadboard component, uh, which used to be their full inch or, or nominal inch three quarter inch material. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If people had something that kind of looked like it that he thought would pass, but anything we can not buy. Like... 
it, it's, this project is overwhelming with the cost. It's just been blowing me away. Yes. This is not my day job or anything. This is my retirement gig. Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> cost of doing things are staggering these days. Okay, anybody get anything else? Anybody want to throw in? This has been really helpful. No, I don't know what else you're going to do. I mean, once you explore the uh, the skeleton underneath everything, that'll tell you what. Yeah. That'll give you more idea of what your options are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do agree that looking at those rails, I'm certain are a significant expense. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, that's what Jason said too. And he looked at him. That's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah. And again, as Liz mentioned, a, a pipe rail system or a they make a, a black wire that is frequently used on decks, decks yeah, interior, exterior yep. as well. Uh, that in combination with a pipe rail on the top and maybe a couple of lines of cable, yeah, yeah, yeah underneath we, it might be sufficient. I yep. can't recommend the cables. Yeah, that's what I mentioned cables to Jason. And because they've done a lot of work on us, uh, for us on our buildings, they know the kind of beating that it, it, they take. He, he said they're prone to failure. Probably not That's a good idea. Is it? They, they're roughly used. They're roughly used. Yeah. That's the business we're in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Good luck with your exploration. Yes. Get it down to 100. <laughs> I know, such a deal. Oh, such a deal. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, thank you, folks. It's a tough problem. Good, Good luck. luck, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. Has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from February the 7th? Yep, and I move to accept them the way they're written. Second that, Liz. All in favor of accepting the minutes, speak your names. Martha, I mean, yes. Liz, yes. Steve, yes. So the minutes are approved. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? Otherwise, our next meeting is March the 7th. And do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. And I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Yes, Liz. And Stephen, so meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. You have a good night. Yep. Good night. Thank you.